welcome to Stitchy Talk. Today's April 5th. It's Emma's 15th birthday, so happy birthday, Emma. Um, today, what we're going to work on is we're going to work on flea market baskets. And we started this uh, sew along in, or quilt along or stitch along in January of this year. I'm going to pop up kind of our dates, and these are just subjective. And when we got to March, you'll see that March is that inner plaid border, and we got a lot of questions on what is the best way to attack that or stitch that because a lot of people just had questions. So I thought on this Stitchy Talk, I could just go through and kind of talk about what I'm going to do and why I'm going to do it. So, um, and then we can, I can answer any stitching questions um, or anything like that. So we're gonna focus on this piece and what I wanted to show you is when you get to right here, I've divided this like April, April, April. So the first week of April, the second week of April, the third week of April, that's how I'm going to do it. But I do think for me, it's easier to have at least the edge done. So I've got a point of reference. We have the inner border scheduled for March. So you should have that done. And we have this <clears throat> outer border as August. But for me, outlining this as I go is going to be helpful. And if I have enough time that month, I'll finish out the border so that I can um, get a little bit ahead for August. So I'm just going to kind of show you what I do and hopefully you'll learn something. It's definitely not the way you have to do it. It's kind of just, I like to have a baseline. So I'm going to start, this is actually the first basket, but for me, it's easier to start here and outline this basket than to go backwards. So I'm going to outline here and just show you the way I do it. Then we'll go and move over here, and then I'll show you kind of how I outline the outside. So before we started, I went ahead and looked and kind of cheated at the pattern and came up with my count. The first thing I'm going to do is roll... The fabric a little bit out of the way. I like it to be a little bit tighter than that though so and you also don't have to do this this is just something I do to keep keep it where I can grab it a little bit have a grip it kind of creates a grip so what I'm gonna do is right here I'm going to stitch here and here. And this happens to be the same the same floss. It's 3033. And I'm just going to stitch like I normally would. And it's going to be a little bit harder for me because I don't have my halo go. But I'm going to put on some little um, magnifying glasses to see if that helps. And I'm just going to do one X at a time. And when I do this, I don't worry about any of the other stitches that are around it. All I'm doing is outlining the start of the plaid border. And I have a count, like there's a number of stitches that I need. So I just go stitch by stitch. And if y'all have any tips for the border, just pop them in so that we can all share the tips. Anything that helped you while you were doing the journey of the border. I think, you know, when you're working with a border, I think it's always good to outline. That way, if you have to pull out stitches, you just have to pull out the straight line. You don't have to pull out everything inside. So if you get off a stitch, um, you have less work to undo. And I think it just kind of builds like a, um, I don't want to say like a stability, but it's like a foundation. And to me, doing the baskets will be easier by at least having this. And then just let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, I am using the called for DMC and I have all of my DMC on the floss keeper. It's kind of a mess right now. Um, but I just unthreaded my thread. Um, and then Sharon is asking if you can use old embroidery floss. I think you can. People buy embroidery floss all the time. That's older, but I'm not an expert, so I'm not 100% sure. 
So yeah, I'm just gonna go up. And this is 25 count Lugana. And I'm able to see it pretty good. And then you guys can comment and let me know, are y'all going to kind of, as you do your baskets, kind of build a base? Or are you gonna build a base and then also try to do some of the um, gingham part? I really enjoyed the gingham part. A lot of people thought it was um, tedious, but I actually really enjoyed it. I think I liked the, the outlining and then the filling in. And I, I like doing that because I feel like I'm going to, I think I'm off a stitch. Um, I feel like I, I'm less likely to make a mistake because the foundation's there, so I'm a little bit less nervous. Let's see. And then as I do the gingham, one thing I do is I outline, like I'm gonna show you all of the outline, but then from there, I will fill in by color. So probably all the lights and then the darks or the lights, it, at that point, it doesn't matter. The colors are all very light, so I just go color by color. And it's fun to do it kind of all at one time because then you kind of have it memorized what you need to do, but it's also fun to break it up so that it doesn't become so monotonous. Um, someone's asking what fabric you can use with pearl cotton. So um, I'm not an expert, but I would use something um, big and large because that thread is thick. So I'm gonna be using a 20 count linen on the next stitchy talk and i'm going to be demoing pearl cotton i've never used it but i'm going to use it for the first time on stitchy talk and we're going to just try it out and see how it works um it was something i found at needlework market that i absolutely loved so i just said because i love it i have to do it um, and i am stitching over two and now i'm going to take a i'm going to stop um i can tell right there i'm off see right there I'm off, I'm off, I'm off, so I have to pull all this out. I was gonna count, but I'm off, I can tell. So yes, I'm stitching over two squares, and I always use a Halo Go when I stitch. I just can't do it on this video because it doesn't work with the cameras, but um, I, that's why I use a Halo Go, so I don't have to unstitch stuff. But it's easy to see. I mean, you could see I'm one, I'm one square over. I went over three instead of two. Um, you mentioned going to a stitch shop when I was in Atlanta. I ended up not going. I called a couple of places and they wore uh, embroidery stores. They weren't cross stitch, but I figured they might have thread, but they didn't have the thread I needed. Okay, so make sure I'm not sure this stitch is even right and I will show the loop method when I start again um, and when you use the loop method you're it supposedly makes your thread tangle more but I always use the loop method so now I'm gonna try to pay attention to my stitching to see, to make sure I'm not off. So it looks like I'm going the right way. And I do have to unpick my stitches quite a bit, but not if I'm using my Halo Go light. If you're using old and new floss of the same color code, check the color to make sure they, are, they, stay, they still match. That's a great hint or great tip. I, I find that even sometimes with new floss. And you guys can cop, pop in the comments and let me know, like, have you stayed caught up with this, with this um, stitch along? And as I'm going, if I was at home, I would be counting. 
as I go, but I, I don't think I can count and talk. So I'm kind of guessing because I need to be about right there. That's about halfway. And you guys can tell me how many hours y'all are at. On the project. Okay, so now I look, it looks like I'm kind of almost there. So I'm going to start counting. So I count from here. One more stitch. And I never really trust myself completely. I'm gonna look at one thing. Let's see, I'm looking at the pattern on the side. Okay, so now I'm going to make a stitch going down and then I'm going to recount my stitches because I always count two or three times. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four. And um, I still have not found a needle that compares to Pat Carson. Um, I've tried a lot of brands. Uh, Bowen is my second favorite, so that's what I can say. It doesn't compare. It's totally different. It's a finer needle, but the quality of the actual needle, um, that would be my second favorite. And, you know, everyone keeps asking for an alternative, but I'm, only, I'm just going to be honest, and I'm only going to give you an alternative when I find one, and I haven't found one yet. Oh, Marlene is not caught up. This will be a many month project. Yes, this one will definitely be all year. And I'm hoping when I get all the way back that I meet up exactly where, um, where I should. But the beauty of this is if I don't, then all I have to pull out is these stitches. I don't have to pull out all the subsequent stitches next to it, which is why I'm trying to do like a little outline. Do I always stitch in hand on 25 count? Yes, I do stitch in hand, and I did stitch in hand on Kringles. The only ones that I haven't been 100% able to stitch in hand is the metallic raw silver linen. Um, I'm kind of able to, but not all the way, so I am still using a hoop on that one. The fabric's not even across, and um, I think by the time I'm finished, finished, I might be all the way there, but um, I do try to stitch in hand when I can. And I do keep this hand, you're gonna notice, this hand won't move while I'm stitching. I try to move everything with my, my right hand, and then the left hand provides stability. Okay, right there, I went in the wrong hole. I went, I hit right in the wrong hole. And uh, let's see, with raw silver, I feel like I unstitch every five stitches because I go in the wrong hole. Okay, so I'm almost down to the bottom. So let's see if we can get there. And if I do make a mistake, like if I see a mistake over here and I'm over here, I will unpick the stitches. Oh, and then ND Quilter is going to stitch all of the bloom where you're planted um, separately. That's going to be really pretty. I'm going to start that. I get to start that one soon. I haven't started it yet. It's really pretty. I'm excited to do the border on that. I love yellow. What has been my favorite cross stitch pattern of all time? Um, the one that stays out in my house all year is Kringles because um, Kevin wanted to put it up at Christmas and I was like, no, we're gonna keep that out. Um, oh my goodness. Flea market flowers, maybe? 
That one was fun to stitch. And uh, 25 count linen, if it says linen, it's not even weave. But if it's Lugata, it is even weave. So any of Lori's 25 counts, they're considered even weave. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, now it looks kind of off, but once you start filling all this in, it will look even. Um, and I'm gonna run this under, I try to do five stitches. Okay, we'll see right there, that's a, a little thread got there. I don't know where that came from. Okay, so I'm gonna run this under about five stitches. That's kind of the number um, that I go under. And then I tug it slightly just so it's not loose. I cut right to the point or right to the edge. And I'm gonna count again, just to make sure. So I've got that base down. So this will be the second week of April that I can put that basket in. But now I'm gonna go backwards and I'm gonna do an outline over here. And so I'm gonna kind of roll this in. Um, wouldn't it be easier stitching on the Morgan hoop with a stand? Well, I am not usually where I can stitch with a stand. I am usually um, stitching in my car at a basketball game or a desk at work. Um, so, and I just don't, I don't, I don't want to look at a stand either. Um, so probably be easier, but I don't think I could, I definitely couldn't do the sewing method with the stand. It would be too, um, heavy. How short do you let your thread get before you end? Either when it gets ravelly or about three inches. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take a peek at my pattern off to the side real quick and um, I need to go this way and I'm just gonna kind of look at the pattern make sure I've got it right in my head how I'm going to do it and then I'll show you the loop method so I'm gonna put a stitch right here I'm gonna do you know the half cross come to the back there's a little loop put the needle in the loop and then I don't let it sit right there I like it to be in the middle slightly so I'll kind of move my thread a little bit and then go back down making sure not to go back in that loop and then I need to go up the same way that way and I'm going to tilt it a little bit just because it might be a little bit easier. What is the tool that I just use on the fuzzball? Floss Fairy Wand. It comes in this little tube and um, it's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple stitches, make sure I've kind of got the rhythm. And hopefully there won't be any stitches that I need to pull out. And when I'm stitching, when I'm not on video, I can stitch way faster. Um, but my main thing is I want my stuff to be nice. Um, you know, I get comments sometimes that, you know, why do I have to make everything perfect? Um, I think stitching and crafting is all about what you want to do. So I like things to be nice. I think it's because I have a very chaotic life and I can have control over my stitching. I can't have control over everything else. So. And it's very, um, very
very relaxing. If I need to calm down, I'm gonna stitch. Who are some of my favorite designers, Kiki asks. Well, Lori Holt, Priscilla and Chelsea, Country Cottage, Little House. Those would be the ones that I've stitched the most. I also like hands-on design and hard in hand. How do I get the wrinkles out of 14 count Ada? Um, we just iron, but I'm not really sure. Um, we just iron it out, but, and if it's got a really bad, uh, crease, I'll put a starch on it, but I'll be pretty careful when I do that. We like to use a pressing cloth, um, when we're pressing and, um, you just put the pressing cloth Put, your, put the pressing cloth on your iron and then put this face down on top and then press. And it kind of um, makes your stitches st sink in. Amy asks, which floss does Kimberly prefer for color variation within the same color thread? Classic Color Works or NPI? I want more flash than DMC on my next project. Okay, so if you want color variation in your project where you see like an ombre effect and it goes like light dark, that kind of thing, classic color works. If you want something that's going to glide through your fabric and be a little bit shinier and one color, that would be NPI. Um, I do try to vary mine from time to time just so I have variation. Okay, so now I need to count. I might have gone too far. Okay, one more stitch and then I'm going to count again because I don't trust myself. Let's see. So I usually do one stitch down and then recount. Okay. And then I'm gonna go back down. I use the eraser on my Gypsy Quilter Seam Ripper to remove thread. Works well on floss. Oh, that's a great tip. I've never, I've never tried that. Love the loop method. What type of fabric matter when stitching in hand? Is it better to have stiffer fabric? Um, for me, I prefer stiffer fabric. I don't like soft fabric, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. Um, I'm kind of a, one thing that's really good about me and one thing that's really bad about me is I'm a creature of habit. I like things to be consistent and so I tend to just use what works for me. Um, but for Mania, I did pick some hand dyed fabric to try. So once I try that, I'll be able to tell you what I think on um, using softer fabric. Okay, so now I've kind of gotten, let's see, hold on, let's see, I've got about, let's see how many inches I've got, uh, about five inches left maybe, so I'll, I'll do a couple more stitches and then I'll end it. Um, that was a question we got earlier. And if I am working with something and my thread is just not cooperating, I will um, just end my stitches early. So let's see. Okay, so right there, that's about enough. And I'm gonna take a little drink because I'm thirsty, sorry. Ooh, that tea's good. <laughs> Some strong tea. I went to I went to get tea the other day and the guy said I said, no water, extra ice. He's like, do you realize it's very concentrated? I was like, yes, sir. I would really like that. And he kind of looked at me like I was crazy. And I was like, no, no, no. That's how I like my tea. Okay. So I don't wait until I get to the very end of the thread for whatever reason. I kind of end it about there. And then I'm going to keep going. We'll go here. And then I'm going to show you kind of some stuff I do up here. Let's see, questions. Can you do the loop method when you're doing one thread? No. 
Um, and you're not technically, just so you know, you're not supposed to use the loop method when you use uh, hand dyed floss, but I do because I like to break the rules. Not really, I don't like to break the rules. I just, to me, the color variation doesn't matter. Um, do I ever get a sore wrist stitching in hand? No. Um, I have got, well, I have gotten where this is sore, but only when I'm like, like really extreme stitching. Um, I kind of stitch all the time, so I kind of, I think I get used to it. But there's some stuff you can get at Walgreens. It's called like cool something. But, um, yeah, I kind of don't let anything stop me. I'm kind of a little bit crazy. Uh, is it possible for me to carry the Little House Needleworks calendar girls? They're so cute. Uh, we'll look into it. I've never even heard of that. So we'll look into it. If it's still in print and it's still orderable, yes. But I don't know what that is. So you have me stumped. And you can see kind of as I'm going, I'm getting faster and faster. And that's just, that's kind of what I think will happen for you guys too when you're doing this. Um, you kind of just get used to it. So I need a couple more stitches. Uh, let's see, Jennifer says, do you rinse threads before using them? Oh my gosh, no. Like the tag recommends, absolutely not. No, if I had to do that, I'd definitely, I'd be out. I'd say, okay, I'm done, I'm out. Yeah, no. I um, hardly even do my own laundry, so no. Um, I'm so bad. I'm not like a very... I'm not, when my kids, I mean, I don't know, when they want their, if if they need their laundry done before it's laundry day, I'm like, okay, will you do it? And then they make a mess in the laundry room. Okay, I'm gonna count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, I guessed right. And then I'm gonna go back down, but I am gonna count one more time. Okay, let's see. Anne Marie says, Kimberly, what Ada would you recommend for a soft 14 and 16 count? I would recommend a hand dyed, like Fiber on a Whim. That's what I would recommend. And that's the brand that I'm gonna try during Mania. So once I try it, I will let you know what I think. I know it's really pretty, and I'm gonna be using it for all four seasons of the pattern that I picked. So you'll get to see that soon. I have seven Okay, I, I missed a stitch right there. Um, I have seven patterns, six designers for Mania. Yeah, I went a little off. Is there a best practice for a place to start when stitching over two? Should you start, oh, it doesn't matter where you start. Pr uh, Priscilla and Chelsea start the top left. I start sometimes top left, sometimes bottom left, sometimes center. I say start towards play any mini miny mo or you could just tell your kids where should I start I just start wherever it's easiest um, and we are gonna have an upcoming sew along with um, home is where the wreath is and the wreath swap two and one so we're gonna talk about that tomorrow so that'll be super exciting to if you want to sew along with me on that I can't wait to start that that's gonna be so fun Oh, and thank you to Valeria Bauer. She always gives me super chat. One time when I come to Houston, I'll have to meet you. My in-laws live in Houston. Okay, so I'm almost, let's see. Am I doing half stitches? I'm doing full stitches. So I do the first, this is the first half. And that's the second half. So yeah, I'm doing full stitches. You could do half stitches. It would just be a little bit, um, you'd be kind of, since you're going at an angle, it'd be a little bit harder. Now, if I was outlining like a letter, I would probably just do half stitches. But on this, because it's an angle, I feel like I it's a little bit easier this way. And yeah, I think my biggest tip on stitch, stitching in hand is just to keep that left hand still. 
Okay, so almost to the bottom. So I hope that y'all learned something today. I always feel like I just show y'all stuff and I'm like, I don't even know if it's useful or helpful, but um, now that I'm doing this and it's so easy and so quick, I can tell you what I'll be doing with this. Let me finish, let me get my last stitch. And even though this is the last one, I'm still gonna count to make sure Still gonna count. Okay, so I'm gonna run this under, and because it's the same math all the way across, so I've gone through five. I'm gonna keep stitching, but I wanna show you what I'm gonna do. I will go ahead and do these throughout the whole thing, just to get it done. Because that was so quick, okay, that took me 30 minutes. If I wasn't on camera, that would've taken me 10 to 15. Um, first of all, because I wouldn't be talking. Second of all, I'd be watching true crime. And third of all, I would have my Halo Go light and I would be going like crazy. So I will definitely do that all the way across. But now what I want to show you is, and it's going to be a little bit harder, but I'm going to show you how I kind of outline the top too. And I don't think that's really that important. Um, I'm just going to do it to kind of show you how I fill in. It's going to kind of show you fill in a little bit. It's going to be a little bit harder because obviously I don't have the pattern memorized. So I'm going to have to get out some Lori Holt sticky notes to put on my pattern to, to like, place where I'm at. Let's see, so I'm right here, right here, okay. Okay, so let me roll everything back up again. What I'm gonna be stitching in, and this will just, this is uh, probably, I'll probably finish the section, but it's, um, I mean, I'll finish this section because I started it after, uh, tomorrow's before tomorrow's live stream just because once I start a little section I like to finish it but I won't do it on all of them so the way that I start fill in is since I've already done this color I'm gonna fill in all of the light so I'm gonna show you that and then from there you can kind of um, of course ask me any questions but I'm sure the rest will make it'll be kind of the same thing it's just a different color do I have information yet on the home to home series She's gonna send us an image, so we're gonna text her right now and ask her for the image. Um, she's gonna send us, but we don't have info on the finishing or anything yet. Do I use fusible interfacing on the back of my finished piecing? No, I don't. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna just start kind of going across And this will be a little bit harder because it won't be, you know, one-to-one, -one, I guess. Do I starch my cross-stitch fabric before I start or when I'm finished? No. What about the fabric I use for finishing? Um, no, I don't starch it. And to be honest, uh, Priscilla finishes all my stuff. Or Lori, and they don't starch. But yeah, I don't starch for cross-stitch finishing. Okay, so from here, I think I'll work my way down and then up. I try to just do the same, I try to get in a rhythm, I guess, of, instead of like just going everywhere, I think I'll go down first and then see where I get. I'm scared to try stitching over two. That's why I haven't started the new stitch quarterly. Um, you could always buy a 14 count 
Um, but I think Lugana is the easiest thing to start on because it's even weave. And I think it's like, like obviously uh, Ada to me is the easiest. I have no problems with Ada, even black Ada. For um, Lugana, the 25 count's super easy to see. I'm sure the 28 would be harder for me to see. But I do use the, the light, the Halo Go. And then if I'm at basketball, I take magnifying glasses. And then one of my kids said, Mom, you look really like a nerd over there. I was like, I'm good. One of my kids, this is a, I have a funny story. So one of my kids, he, um, he tested at the genius level. Uh, like, he really did. But he really, ha but he has no common sense. Like, no. And we, we talked to him about it because we're trying to make him a little bit more aware of, like, what's going on. Um, and so it's like an ongoing discussion about it. So he had UIL, and, you know, he'd never been to UIL. And it was eight schools, so I walked him in. Poor thing. And, um, oh, my gosh, he got third. He, first of all, he got, he's in sixth grade. He got moved to the seventh grade team. And he got third out of all the seventh graders out of eight schools. I was so proud of him. But I had to walk him in because I was like, okay, I'm not sure he's going to know where he's going. And then um, I was sitting there stitching until his teacher came because I was like, well, I don't want to, like, leave him with all these, like, I don't know. He's like, Mom, like, it's kind of embarrassing. You're, like, in here. I'm like, okay, I'll go to my car as soon as your teacher comes. Because I needed to, like, make sure I knew, like, where to pick him up. But he's, he's so sweet. He's, like, the nicest kid. My other kids call him the golden child because he, um, he doesn't ever get in trouble. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to go this way. Now, what I could do, is so from right here you can either fill in right here like a three by three square or you can go up I'm just gonna keep going up since I've already gone up piggy oh my gosh piggy's so good he's he's so spoiled that the dog is so spoiled he's so spoiled okay so let me think about where I'm at okay so I think I need to go here it's kind of harder to go up um, I'll have to pink bring piggy eventually Let's see. Okay, so I think I'm I think I'm doing it right. And also if I go in one direction, then if I make a mistake, I'll remember exactly where I was. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then I'll then I'll thread off and then I'll keep going. And I guess I could go across to make sure I'm in the right. It's kind of, I think it was like more, it was easier to follow going down than going up. Let me see. Okay, let me do one more. Let's see. Try to get to the end with a thread. When you stitch on 18 count, do I count and need to count 10 stitches to start, or do I count one hole or two holes? You would uh, count, just consider a two by two square one stitch, and I would just start with one stitch at a time. If you're doing something that's like a, cross, a row, you, you could do it as a row. It depends how you stitch. Um, if you're stitching with variegated, you're technically supposed to stitch one X at a time instead of going in a row, but I just stitch whatever's fastest. Let's 
see. Okay. So I kind of look at it. It looks correct. And you can see my stitches over here look a little bit better than these over here. I don't see any mistakes. So, okay. So I'm going to thread off and then we'll, we'll start filling in other areas. While you're working on a large piece of fabric like that, do I clip only one side or both sides as you work in a particular section? I usually do left and right. I don't usually do the bottom. The, bat, the bottom, I'll just let it fall in my lap or something or on the desk or wherever. I usually just do left and right. Okay. I enjoy trying the Lugana and Stitch Quarterly makes me get out of my comfort zone. Yes, it's good to get out of your comfort zone sometimes. Lately, I'm not a fan of doing that. Let's see. Just started a Halloween cross stitch for the cross-eyed cricket called The Three Gables by Vicki Hastings. It looks hard. Do I ever get intimidated? Oh yeah, I was really intimidated by Kringles the entire time I made it. Like the entire time I was intimidated. And um, right now all Glitter Village and Nutcracker Village, it is stressful for me. It's really hard. And I did finish the next part of Nutcracker Village. I can't even remember. Yeah, Nutcracker Village, I can show you tomorrow. So at least I did one of them. I can't even tell the difference. Sometimes, okay, so here what I'm gonna do is start here, and I think I'll go kind of like that, and you'll see. So let's see, one, two, Okay, so I'm doing this one as a row, but then the, so you'll see there's three, so that's a row. But since I'm gonna go to the right, I'm going to stitch one X at a time so that I can travel easier to the next spot without wasting thread and I guess the back will be slightly neater too. So I think I do it not really to waste thread. I think I do it just more so the back is easier to. And then this is gonna, so that's a two by three. Now I'm gonna do a three by three and then I'll go back up and I'll show you. So I don't always just, I kind of just do whatever to me is going to be the most efficient, I guess. And I, I know this is um, not technically 100% the way you're supposed to stitch. This is just how I stitch. So let's see. Doesn't the magnifier get in the way? Oh no, it does not. It does not. I love my magnifier. I have like five of them and I'm not even kidding. There's like one in the car, one in my office, one at home, actually like two or three at home. Oh no. And when I go on travel, I, now I take two because one time I broke it. Um, no, I love the magnifier. Because I can go really, really fast with the magnifier because there's a lot of less um, pulling the stitches out. And then I'll go back this way. So you can see I'm just traveling. Um, thank you for sharing your true feelings about sampler projects. Nutcracker is making me a little anxious because I want to do so well on it. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a challenge. Um, it's going to be beautiful when it's done, though. I mean, I know I'm going to love it when it's done. And I don't. Now, if it was not work, I probably would have quit and just said, okay, that's too much. <laughs> um, but I don't want to do that and look like a fool on video, so I just kind of tough through it. But I, I mean, it's really pretty. It's gorgeous. It's just, and maybe by the time at the end of the year, I might be totally fluent. Like, I might be able to stitch in hand the whole time. I might be, you know what I mean? I might be able to see it better. We'll see. 
We did find a fabric we think is going to be really nice. We need to check on it from Yarn Tree because it still has not shipped. We found a Lugana that we think will work for stuff like that in the future, but we have ordered it like five months ago and it still hasn't come. Um, can I carry cross-eyed Cricut? Yeah, we have some. If you have a specific one, that'd be great to know. How do I not get knots stitching so fast? Oh, I have no idea. Um, I, I don't know how I don't get knots. There are days when I get knots more than others. DMC doesn't tend to knot on me at all. Okay, so you can see I did those in rows. Now I'm going to do this as X's. Can we see the stitch quarterly? Yes. If you watch last Wednesday's live stream, it is the cover image and it's about 30 minutes in. That's really cute. I'm stitching on 14 count chalkboard and I'm having a hard time seeing with cheaters and a portable light. I've ordered the Halo Go hoping it will help. Yeah, it will help. It's um, a lot of people say they can't see the chalkboard black, but I can see it just fine. I, I don't know why that is. Okay, and now I'm going to go up here. So I'm just trying to stay within a pattern. And then hopefully, you know, when I get to the, to the end, over here, it'll line up. So now that it came unthreaded, I'm going to separate my thread with my needle. And that keeps it from knotting. Do I find it easier to stitch with your arms on a table? Yes, absolutely. And if I'm in my car, I have a lap desk, and that way I can put my arm, my left arm, on the lap desk. I do stitch in my car all the time. I think people think I'm crazy. One of the moms at dance, she called me the other day. She's like, you know I'm in the car next to you. What the heck are you doing with that light? And I was like, oh, I'm stitching. She's like, are you cross-stitching in your car right now? It's 9 o'clock at night. I was like, absolutely. She's like, you're crazy. I don't know what she thought I was doing in the car, but she was like, what are you doing? I try to time it where I have it all put up by the time Emma comes out, but sometimes I'm like, oh, you have to wait. I have to put all this away. Okay. And I stitch it. I don't know what my kids' basketball coaches think I do because they think probably think I'm crazy because I stitch the whole time. All the parents kind of look at me. Um, I don't know. Some of those parents, they're pretty intense. And... Um, I think one thing I've learned is you don't ever want your kid to be the best on the team and you don't want them to be the worst on the team. You want them to be about third. You want them to be about the third best player. That's the golden spot. But you also, I will tell you, you do not want your kid to do what my kid did this weekend, which is um, he shot the basket in the wrong hoop and the other team won by two points, which was he pretty much cost them the game. And not only that, the owner of the whole select thing was coaching. So the owner of the whole thing, who picks who's on the team, was coaching. I was like, that would have been the worst coach to do that in front of. I was, Kevin and I, I don't know, every time we're just like, oh my gosh, can we walk out of here without a parent screaming at us or acting like a fool? These parents, I mean, they just live their lives through their kids. It's, it's really sad. I mean, I get disappointed too, but I don't know. Basketball, I didn't even know what zone, and I finally was like, why is Christopher not guarding somebody? And Kevin's like, they're playing, playing zone. I was like, what is zone? I was like, I don't even know what that is. I think he, I don't know. Because I thought Christopher was in the wrong spot. He's like, no, he knows what he's doing. Okay. So I'm going to do a little bit more. I think I'll stitch to right here and then I'll stop. Let's see, Holly Martin. Oh, thank you, Holly. Thank you for sharing your stitchy knowledge. Thank you so much. I was thinking of you yesterday. I mean, I know that I don't, I know a lot of the things that I show are not the true, like true, true way to do it. Let's see. 
Kimberly, I noticed you pull some of the threads for your project. Do you ever mix Weeks, Dye Works, DMC? Um, if a pattern calls for it, like for example, hand, Heart and Hand does that a lot on the doodles that I'm going to be, do I've already done one and then one of them I'm going to do in Mania. She mixes and I, I just, yeah, I mix them and I keep her, I'm keeping her colors the same on that, on the doodles. What light do I use in my car? Oh, I use the Halo Go and I take a design board or a lap desk. I have both of my car so whichever one's closest and then I set it on that and then I just put my steering wheel like further back if that makes sense and scoot my chair back and I have a little spot I sit in and then yeah and my boys play these tournament things and it's like eight o'clock ten o'clock one o'clock eight o'clock three o'clock so I have at least an hour in between most games. And so if it's not like time to eat or do something, I just do that. And then Kevin sleeps and they um, they usually have to go in 30 minutes early or whatever. But yeah, I could not believe, oh my gosh. I was like, oh my goodness, maybe he won't make it the team next time. Oh my gosh. And then I, I was like, I like was I looked at Kevin. I was like, did he really just do that? And I was like, did he do what I think he did? And Kevin was like, just stop talking. Like, just stop. All these parents are probably going to kill us. But, I mean, I will say it's good. It's good when the people know your kid's name. Like, he, I will say, okay, that was the first game. The last game, they only made eight points. And my son did make all eight of the points. So, I guess he made it up in the third game. So, they have some good, some bad. Um... But that last game, it was brutal. They were, I mean, I think it was like 53 to eight. It was brutal. Let's see, okay. What true crimes am I watching? Oh my goodness, okay. Some people get really mad when I talk about this. Okay, I watched anything, okay, I watched Discovery Plus and I just go to the, um, true crime tab and I watch any of it I watch the there's a new Netflix documentary on a Spanish singer from the 80s who killed someone and um, it was one of his fans that was pretty interesting um, I still don't know what his name was though but it was pretty good it was like an hour and a half I watched that there's the thing on um, I watch anything anything true crime uh, I did see that CrimeCon was coming up and um, Joe Kenda's going, so I'm rethinking my... I really want to go, but I can't. Okay, so, um, so then what I would do is just fill this in. And then from there, I would either fill in the light, the white, or the dark. Either one, whatever I kind of felt like. And one thing I will say is before I start my basket over here, which is what I need to do for tomorrow oh yeah tomorrow I'm gonna finish this because I don't like to leave a, a spot unopened because I work on so many projects even if it's three days from now I'm gonna forget where I was at so I will finish this and then I'll try to have this finished for tomorrow and I'll answer any questions you guys have now on any of it Let's see, I'm stitching the Barn Sweet Barn monthly and I'm having a hard time threading my 24 needle with four strands. Okay, so that was what was great about Pat Carson needles is they have a really big eye. Um, you could try looking for a big eye needle. Um, size, size 22 might work better. Do I ever get tired of stitching because you're pressured to get things done for work? Uh, no, I get stressed out about the amount of things on my list and the way that I handle that is I figure out what's the easiest thing on my list to knock out. If I have too many, like say I have 20 things on my list, I'm going to do like five easy ones and then a hard one and then five easy ones and then a hard one. Um, I have to stay busy at all times. Um, I cannot just sit at a basketball game. When my kid's not in the game, I'm not paying attention. I know that's horrible. I know. 
I know. But the parents stress me out. And the noise stresses me out at those games. Um, dance, the moms are totally chill. They're just, like, drinking wine. They're chill. There's no pressure. Like, there's no, like, if your kid does bad, they're not going to say anything. They're going to just be like, oh, my gosh, you did great. Like, those moms are great. Basketball, those dads, I think they're about ready to kill all of us. Like, they're so crazy. They're, like, on there screaming at the referees. They, he traveled. He he fouled. I'm like, dude, you need to chill out. You need to go outside. You need to drink a little bit of wine. And you need to come in here and just sit down and hush because it's embarrassing. My mom wanted to come to a game, and I told her. I was like, I don't think you can come because you yell, and um, you yell too much, and you can't come. Like, I cannot handle that. You cannot come. She got really mad, but um, if you can't act normal, you can't go places. And these parents, I, they stress me out. I think they stress Kevin out. They're just too much. Like, these kids, they're 12 years old. They're 12. They're not worried about being an NBA player that you parents think that they're going to be. You got to just let them play. And they got to do their best. I get it. They got to do their best. They got to try their best. But these parents, they're stressing me out. So if I take my stitching, it's very much less stressful because if my kid's not in the game, I'm not paying attention. Because if you get so involved in that game, and if they win or they lose, and it's going to ruin your day, you got a problem. So I just take my stitching, and um, my kids know as soon as they go on the court, I put it in the bag. As soon as they're off the court, it comes out of the bag. I know exactly when they're on the court. I watch 100%. Still don't know what's going on, but that's all right. Okay, so that's what I have today for Stitchy Talk. Any questions you have on anything, just put them in the comment box. Of course, I will answer them. And join me tomorrow to see my progress for this week. And hopefully, I'll have the basket done. So, see you then.